And the Sunni position, of course, has always been to accept his determination to think well of everybody. Adam al Khawd fima shajara baina sahaba. We do not get involved in the disputations that happened amongst the Sahaba. We follow the way of Imam Ali and have a positive opinion of everybody. His respect for, for Aisha, his respect for all of the Sahaba is, is what we should be following. And that's one of the most important things that we should be learning. There's an amazing dream of one of the very early Hadith scholars, Amr ibn Shurahbil, which uh, always makes me think. This is what he, he, he wrote down after he saw the dream. I saw it was as though I had entered paradise. And I saw domes or tents that had been set up. And I said, who are these tents for? And it was said to me, they are for Lul uh, Kila and Haushab. And they were two of the people who had fought and killed um, on the side of Muawiyah. And I said, so where are Ammar and his companions? Ammar bin Yasir, one of the great Sahabas, was killed in that battle uh, fighting uh, for the cause of Ali. And they said, there, in front of you. And I said, they were fighting amongst themselves. And it was said, when they met Allah, they found that he was of broad and great mercy. And then I said, what about the people of the river? That's the, the Kharijites, the extremists, the narrow-minded literalists, the people who assassinated Ali. And it was said, they found the fire of hell. And that really sums up the position of the, the scholars of Islam, that we draw a veil over um, what might seem sometimes to us to be strange about intentions that seem to be conflicting with each other, and that we say, Kulluhum odul, all of them were upright witnesses. And there's a tremendous spiritual wisdom in this. And this is why we find that the way of Imam Ali, Karamallahu Wajha, becomes the way of Futuwa, not just for his own age, but subsequently, and the great spiritual ways of Islam flow from him. All of the tariqahs of Islam, with the exception of the Naqshbandiyya, go from Ali ibn Abi Talib. Why should that be? Well, even the Naqshbandiyya, um, their uh, silsila uh, includes uh, Ja'far al-Sadiq. Uh, and... Uh, they also have the kind of alid fragrant about them. So why is that? That requires uh, indications. Why is it that the way followed by Imam al-Ghazali and all of the, the great ones, Imam al-Junaid, the great saints of Islam, the spiritual fragrance comes from Imam Ali? Well, the reason is that the practice which he shows in his life, which is to draw a veil over people's misunderstandings and to work for the reconciliation and always to follow the majority of the Muslims is the basis for true spirituality. We have two options when we see things that we don't understand happening between people. Either we can allocate blame and we can say he killed him and he's on his side and feels superior and the nafs loves that. Or we can say Allahu A'lam, Allah is forgiving and all of them were following a niya which we presume to be good. And it's that second option, which becomes the option of the great ulama of Islam, which is necessary for any sound spirituality. You can't base a spiritual life on suspiciousness and cursing and allocating blame. It's impossible. The first rule of spirituality is to give other people the benefit of the doubt and to blame yourself. And that's what that two-pointed sword represents. It means if you're going to try and establish uprightness in the world, make sure that you've established it in yourself. This is one of the great lessons that we learned from the four khulafa, the necessity of the jama'ah. Yadullahi ma'al jama'ah, wa man shadda shadda fin nar. Allah's hand is over the, the jama'ah, the congregation, the greater number, as sawad al-a'zam. And whoever goes on his own in a small group goes into hellfire. You cannot operate a successful spirituality 
unless you have this principle of giving people the benefit of the doubt and forgiving and including. The moment you start to point the finger of blame and to allocate blame, then the gates of Allah's Rahmah are closed to you because of, of, of the state that you're in. So that's a very important lesson for us to learn. And Imam Ali Karamallahu Wajha is a great, great example of that. A few things just to close. Uh, we've spoken of the spiritual merit of, of uh, Imam Ali. Um, let's just uh, recall a few things. Uh, Ammar bin Yasir, who we've been speaking about, radiallahu an. قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول I once heard Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم saying يا علي أو علي إن الله تعالى قد زينك بزينة لم يزين العباد بزينة أحب إلى الله تعالى منها Allah exalted as he has adorned you with an adornment which he has never adorned any of his servants with any adornment more beloved to him than it Yazinatul Abrari and Allah Azza wa Jal, which is the adornment of the saints, the good ones, uh, in the sight of Allah. What is it? A zuhtu fi dunya, doing without the things of this world. Fajalaka la tazra umina dunya shay'a, and he made you somebody who is not relying on anything in the world. Well, let tazra ud dunya minka shay'a, and then the world does not have any um, uh, dependence upon you. وَوَهَبَ لَكَ حُبَّ الْمَسَاكِينَ And he bestowed upon you the gift of love for the poor. فَجَعَلَكَ تَرْضَى بِهِمْ أَتْبَاعًا And he made you to be happy that they are your followers. وَيَرْضَوْنَ بِكَ إِمَامًا And that they are happy to have you as, as their imam. 